What is up guys, again, Not The Worst here, bringing another Black Desert online video, and today we're taking a look at the Global Lab updates that just went live today, May 13th. Uh, this is a pretty massive uh, update in regards to the types of changes that we're getting. Uh, there's class changes in there, there's item drop changes, a lot of stuff going on. So we're jumping in and take a look. We're going to cover some of the hotter topics of it because it is a very large um, patch in general. If you want to read it, everything word for word, it's linked in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and touch on some of the finer stuff uh, that are included with this. Uh, so first up, we have grind spot reward and drop rate improvements. With this, essentially what they've done is they've, one, changed the trash loot for uh, Kama and Dregan zones in it, although we don't know item, uh, excuse me, drop amount the uh, prices for these type of things, but they've also adjusted how the drop rates and things for these places work um, by categorizing them into uh, different different types. So uh, we have places that are specialized for better use of Agris Fever. We have places that are specialized for Spectre's Energy, similar to Thornwood. Spoiler alert, Thornwood's also in the list for those still. Um, uh, specialization for Kafir Stone Drop, um, a hunting ground that doesn't uh, does not apply an increased item drop rate but the basic loot has been increased so you can hunt without using the item drop rate increase scroll so specific zones if you're out of scrolls that are pretty efficient to grind or supposed to be uh, and then we have combat and skill xp um uh, specialized places and then we actually have an artifact acquisition increase it, it's also a spoiler alert it's kratuga um evidently they've put like all sorts of artifacts into kratuga that can drop there so that you have kind of a standard spot to sort of grind uh, them out altogether, which is kind of interesting, although it is just the one spot. So let's take a look uh, at what types of places have these different specializations. So Agris Fever is set up so that the uh, consumption of it is extremely efficient for these following places here. We got Crescents, Gahas, Centaurs, Achman, Histria, Kratuga. Uh, the upper portion of Gyphon, um, to note, they did say the lower portion of Gyphon is completely untouched with these uh, drop rate changes. Um, the Winter Tree Fossil Area, uh, Tauros, Jade Starlight Light Forest, and Allen Valley are all now considered uh, Agris Fever Specialized Hunting Grounds. Inspector's Energy, we got Prodi Cave, uh, Shirakon's Tomb at Nighttime, uh, Sakraya uh, uh, Upper Level, and then of course Thornwood Forest, which is already currently the best spot in game to get uh, Spectre's Energies. Uh, for it, then uh, we do get increased probability of acquiring Spectre's Energy, increased at other places as well, although they're not considered one of the specialized zones, and it's essentially all the places. So lots of Spectre's Energy existing from there. We've got Caphras Stone Specialized Hunting Grounds. Um, these are places with that are increased Caphras drop compared to other spots of a similar level. Okay, so I wouldn't expect this to be like uh, Allens as a three-man or uh, Gyphon Underground, you know, for the level of Kaffirs, those types of places drop, but uh, we will see an improvement to what they are dropping. That's going to be Thornwood and Manchams, which are already pretty okay Kaffirs drop rates for the AP level that they're at, so seeing them get bumped up quite a bit, or at least a bit, is, is actually pretty interesting. Uh, then we have the item, the hunting grounds that don't require item drop scrolls when you're running at the Bazzy three man recommended uh, party three. You, me you remember when they said they were going to do that uh, three man Bazzy thing was just going to be that one particular season and then it'd go back to normal after the season. Yeah, that was over a year ago. Uh, the Sacrea Upper is also going to be one of those, and the Winter Tree Fossil as well. So evidently, these are going to be places you don't really need to worry about running scrolls. So if you're out of them or you just don't feel like popping them right now, or you're saving them for I don't know an event coming up or something like that. Or maybe you're going to be grinding for your um, your embers soon or something, and you want to save them until you're ready to do that. You can go for it and maybe grind these spots. Hopefully, we'll be a little more, bit more efficient for you without the loot scroll than grinding a place where you'd want to use one. We've got combat and skill XP specialized hunting grounds, although we've had these in the past. Um, we're getting a few more that aren't currently that way. Uh, but for combat XP, uh, Fogans, Nagas... Uh, Marie's Cave, which is notoriously actually a really good skill XP spot as is. Uh, the three-man Wargons, and then Miramok as well. Then skill XP uh, specialized hunting grounds, we have Bashams, Faddis, uh, also the Bazzy Lair, and then the Shere Khan's Abandoned Iron Mine, the, the um, Labyrinth in the New Zone, the um, Snow Eternal Winter Zone. Uh, and then a place for both of these things is the underground Gyphonrasia, which kind of obviously if you've been there, that place is just massive XP and skill, uh, uh, combat and skill XP um, on the underground side. The upper, I'm not entirely sure if that one is. Sakraya Undersea Ruins, upper level, and Prodigy Cave as well are evidently going to have both for these types. Uh, then we have a gathering rewards that can be obtained through skinning after killing monsters in the following hunting grounds areas have been increased to the Novern Step. Uh, so I, pose, I suppose if you're trying to get your MP pot, that should be something there. And then the artifact ground uh, 
the artifact zone uh, of Kratuga, as I mentioned there, where this is going to be dropping all kinds of Marsha's, uh, Lisha's, and Kahel's artifacts um, that are in it, it ex except for the living relics, Sethra's relic, I believe they mean the life-skilling ones uh, on there. Those won't be dropping, of course, because you have to life-skill to get those. So um, pretty cool to see that, especially just like one localized spot to, to grind out, especially if you're looking for a few different types, trying to get, I don't know, a, a melee AP set and also an evasion set or something, or your monster damage, plus you want an AP set or whatever it is. Uh, maybe you could just spend a few hours in there and hopefully get uh, what you need or something along those lines. Trash uh, loot price increase, as I mentioned. They don't say the amount that these are increased for it, but they are increased. We've got Fattis, Shira, Polly, uh, Blood Wolves, Shira Khan, Day and Night, Novern Step, Ronaros, Miramok, Mansham, and Upper Gyphon. So some amount of pr trash loot price increase on it. Um, you'll have to either check it out on Global Labs or I'll eventually at some point go through and pull all of these uh, to bring them over to see exactly how much uh, if they don't get posted first. Um, we've got contribution specialized hunting around. This is places that have weekly quests to get one contribution point by completing the quest. Uh, and that is, you can do these up until 350. Once you get there, you won't be able to do these anymore to push an extra contribution. So a nice boost to get moving on that if you're an uh, earlier account. We've got some updates to Black Magic Crystals. They're stackable, or rather, it's now going to be an item that drops uh, that you can open. That is, So the item itself is stackable, um, and then you open these into getting your... Um, getting or bmc so a little bit of a quality of life improvement with that now we see some item drop rate changes and there's a few different things going on with what's going to be happening here so the maximum upper limit for the uh increase of ecology is increased and alongside this they've made some other adjustments too but first of all you're going to have up to ten thousand ecology the max currently is eight thousand for the max reward for it is eight thousand at the moment and currently you get a twenty percent item drop rate increase if you have that eight thousand it's now going to go up to ten thousand points and at 10,000 points it's going to be 30 percent increased drop rate not only is it a 30 percent increased drop rate but the prior points are also increased so for example currently i have like 4,930 points or something something where it's like i should probably just get 5,000 um, points for it so i have a 12 percent ecology buff at the moment that's going to change to 16 percent with these changes uh, and if then if i went to 15 percent currently it'd be a two percent increase uh, for me here it would still be a two percent increase but that would get me up to 18 percent off the 5,000 bracket from there so the base amount that they're currently at is being changed um, to be increased and the ceiling for it is going up to 10,000 as well so quite a bit extra there um, then we've also got family fame is going to be picking up in addition to the uh, the market tax reduction effect of having 7,000 family fame. You're also going to get an item drop rate plus 10% added onto this. So just having that 10,000 ecology and item drop rate 10% off your 7,000 family fame, that's an extra 40% drop rate that you've got uh, set up right there, which is pretty cool. Now to tie in with this, there is going to be a limit that can be applied for drop rate. Um, now, the, they do mention that the reason for this is because they are introducing some more drop rate increases, and they think that some people may have some pushback on it, but the percentage numbers that we're talking about here are significantly high. Uh, so it's going to be a 300% um, max amount that you can increase in regards to item drop uh, chance scroll. So turning your loot scroll on is 100, 50% maybe if you have, uh, let's say, a, an old moon scroll with that. Um, your adventurer's luck bonus um, that's on there, your common self blessing, 20% on that. A pet event, which at tier four is 4%. Any event items that you might have, like a winter crystal or something, which are 30%. Uh, and then drop rate increase events as well, which are 50% there. So you'd have to have a lot of items running all at once in the first place to be able to get to approach that 30, 300% um, along with it. It's obviously doable, but it's it's not it's not like you're really going to be hurting yourself because there's that cap something that's going to be separate from that is the territory castle buff and the arsha server buff do not apply to that so you can actually have up to 400 percent item drop chance maximum if you have those two effects as well okay so you'll be able to get that 300 percent from those other factors and then you could be on arsha with a castle buff that give you an additional 100 percent and you'll hit the complete ceiling of 400 percent total um, upgrade. This also is going to bring into effect that when there are item drop events, we've get a, we get a 15% drop rate bonus on all servers. Uh, it's not going to affect the Arsha drop rate. The Arsha drop rate is going to, or rather it is going to affect the Arsha drop rate. The Arsha drop rate is now considered a separate effect. So that means you can get the item drop rate event going 50%, be on Arsha, and you still get another 50%. So it, it, there is still a benefit 
to being on Arsha while having a drop rate event. Arsha doesn't come become a completely dead server. On the contrary, it's probably going to be insanely lively and a lot of open world PvP going on uh, when those events come around next time. It actually did used to be that way a very, very long time ago, and then they changed it at some point. Um, I, I don't recall, three years ago or something that got changed uh, during a drop rate event. So they're bringing that back around and then uh, applying a lot of other ways to increase your drop rate chance. So pretty interesting to see. We've got some Calvian, uh, Calfion Elvia realm improvements and adjustments to that. I'm not going to actually cover these since it hasn't gone live yet, and they're going to continue tweaking these until we kind of see them. I know they're getting pretty close to launching this onto live servers, but uh, delving into this stuff when we, we kind of really haven't looked at it too much in the first place since it's not quite live. Um, not real worried about what kind of tweaks they make till it does go live. Guy from Rassia, it's actually just some issue fixes there underground that they're adjusting here, so nothing super major. Along with that, we have uh, some quest updates, just a few minor things there, but I want to get into the class changes that we have coming up and there, here we go class changes for it so um, I'm not going to delve into every single one that's on here some of the more prominent ones do have dev notes in blue text so we'll talk about those things and mention a few of the finer points um, some skill changes and damage buffs and things for like uh, Corsair adjustments to Sork if you're wondering about Zerker we've got updates in here um, for instance Warrior picks up a skill add-on on a few classes or at least the flow to classes that it didn't have before but let's go ahead and touch on some of the bigger ones that we've got here so for Sork we've added a technical description to the Dark Shard recovery technique by organizing the technical descriptions that are used in a mixture of Dark Shard uh, and dark shards. Hmm. In addition, instead of removing the phenomenon of recovery during the cooldown, the number of fragments recovered during normal use has been increased so that the fragments are not too scarce. These adjustments will be continuously checked and improved. In Awakening, stamina is not consumed when using mobile skills such as Shadow Leap and Crow Wings. So we've adjusted the mobility of the Sorcerer by adding stamina consumption uh, to the Crow Leap technology. So a bit of a stamina adjustment there to maybe impact the infinite iframe abilities uh, of them and some adjustments to shards for the Sorks as well. Berserker, we've adjusted the situation after the succession giant intrudes into the opposing camp in a team fight by changing the skills to which the super armor effect is applied in the beast state to the frontal guard effect, meaning they can and will likely get CC'd um, as opposed to now where they're just kind of gods. Uh, it's been changed to a frontal guard so that it can last longer than before. That's what she said when using a guard, uh, but it's been changed so that the opponent can limit the movement of the inherited giant if it hits an abnormal attack from the rear. Uh, and we actually get a, a little bit of a look to uh, what's actually happening here on the giant leap skill the effect and range of it has been adjusted there we get a little video to go along with that next up with a box we've got kuno uh, this is a mobility uh, update here while the mobility of the tendon cutter and one island skills was greatly improved in the previous update the skills did not consume stamina so they could be used without much limitation compared to other classes accordingly while maintaining kuno's char uh, character characteristics some stamina adjustment elements were added for techniques that could move long distances in a short time this is also something where um, you can see stamina consumption was adjusted to like tendon cutter for instance uh 300 stamina consumption is updated from there we go from 40 to 200 on dance macabre um so a little bit of hopefully some movement that that actually sounds pretty severe at a glance uh, especially compared to some of the other class tweaks between like sork and zerker um that sounds like a lot that might be quite an impact not a kuno player so you guys tell me but that one actually sounds uh pretty up there we ninja does pick up some pve damage uh buffs and then a, a few tweaks and pvp nothing major dk we've got uh, in the case of awakening the skill reign of despair that's cluster despair can be conveniently activated by right clicking when used during a skill linkage that's kind of the you cancel the startup animation of it but when used in a standing state the control keys are different lmb and rmb which is inconvenient sure in the case of succession we wanted to improve some areas that were lacking in pvp situations first the skill that applied additional guard damage in the previous state which is the the succession airstrike was changed to succession wheel of fortune because there were many opinions that it was too difficult to use in actual combat and the critical hit probability of wheel of fortune was applied even in pvp situations which is 50 percent um change that as much as possible weird sentence finally one of the biggest changes the illusion trap skill for succession version has been added and after the dark Knight night transforms into a phantom state it's been improved so that it can move from the phantom state for a short time and it can also be activated from the rear which i believe it means can go backwards so awakening's got uh just a uh, adjustment so right mouse button is now going to be cluster despair as opposed to lmb and rmb uh, which is great succession is getting 
Uh, the 50% critical that it has on PVE is now in everything. It's just 50% critical always, which is actually huge and even bigger. It's getting the guard shred moved off of airstrike onto Wheel of Fortune. So Succession Wheel of Fortune is going to be 50% crit on it, and it shreds guards too. That's huge. And then the new skill that they're talking about, this is going to be the um, hallucination uh, hallucination snare that you see the little rose kind of stun thing that you have now it's actually going to be like insanely good for succession you can see you can move during this where you're coming out where those three roses are and then when they said to the rear I think they I, I, I don't believe they meant it actually will go to the back of the opponent oh it maybe it does it looks I see I see this moving backwards if you look in the animation but I see another rose behind the opponent can you actually go behind uh, we'll have to test that out that looks pretty nasty if you can go behind we already have the um block jump float with the new nocturne from the revamps um as is uh mystic did get uh some buffs uh in in a few different things uh buffs and and nerfs for for between um uh pvp damage for it so damage reduction rate for um sea burial uh rising dragon and wave orb uh we see the actual reduction rate is reduced on it so previously seven in each of those um accordingly 75.9 going to 60 percent reduction 61 going down to 55.5 and 68.3 going down to 64 percent. so a little bit of extra juice uh damage there um hash got a pretty interesting uh setup for its ales breath the prime ales breath has been added to create a sandblast when using prime descent and chosen blade skills um, while using that skill itself so it actually procs that giant tornado thing everywhere for it it looks really cool i saw a clip of someone doing it earlier today uh, before jumping into that so that was uh actually really 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 cool now, nova got defense judgment when using the break orbit skill has been changed from super armor while using the skill to an iframe into super armor while using the skill which is obviously just incredibly useful instead of just being super armor all the way you can actually like dodge things uh, and then it got a new skill as well an excel um, excel frozen ring which has been added i couldn't tell you what this says but it's got some form of protection there and some amount of damage um sage because i will tell you sage is the most commented one <laughs> ever in the comments when we talk about any types of buffs or nerfs that go anywhere people always bring up sage and i'll be honest with you it didn't get a whole bunch but uh not yet anyways keep in mind they did say last week in on the global labs uh, that they were going to not necessarily push all of these things directly to the live servers and kind of tweak things on the global labs over time so this is another kind of wave of changes so you know don't go crying just yet you may have something coming next week or the week after who knows let's see but what you did get when using the prime rift chain skill during cooldown it's been improved to ignore character collisions it's been improved so that void gateway skill is activated after the movement ends when connecting with the rift chain skill using the void gateway skill so there you go you can get a little visual of what that looks like and it's been modified so that the skill add-on is applied when the skill uh black spirit aider spear is successful which is kind of whatever a uh, small adjustment to Guardian. Uh, Corsair does see uh, some PvP damage adjustments as well. And it does, uh, on her mermaid skills, the grapple resist is going to apply at the beginning of the skill um, rather than shortly after, which is nice. And then some skill linkage has been adjusted, more specifically with Captain's Orders. Being able to chain a couple different things together has made it a little smoother, and as well with Ocean's Allure, and they give some video examples with that. Draconia, uh, actual really nothing skill linkage on one skill, so nothing really there. So there you have it. A lot of stuff going on in the Global Labs. Really cool to see that. I do want to just reiterate that they are going through these um a bit at a time so uh i'm sure the top comment's going to be well class xyz didn't get anything pa sucks because whatever like pump the brakes my guy chill they're working on it let's see what let's see what they do first before they push them to live servers this is just test servers now let's get it tested out see if they have uh, another round or two of other changes that they want to implement or tweak these things um, and then we can all cry about it together when they actually go to live servers and then we're either disappointed or thrilled uh, depending on the class that we talk about once that happens so keep that in mind uh, again these notes are in the description if you want to check them out uh, on your own let me know what you guys think about the stuff going on in the comments down below if you did enjoy the video be sure to like it if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe so you get notifications when new videos do go live and if you'd like to catch me playing live there's a link to my twitch page in the description down below you can click on that jump on over there drop a follow so you can get notifications for that as well with that said that's going to be it for this one I want to thank everybody for watching and i will see you next time